Hi, I'm Carl Franklin. In this episode of Blazor Train, I've invited my friend Brian McKay to show us how to add Blazor to an existing MVP application. It's too hard! Blazor is ASP.NET Core, and MVC is also ASP.NET Core. It's too hard! And so it should be easy, right? It's too hard! Will you shut up, man? Uh, Brian goes through the simple steps you'll need for basic integration and then shares his GitHub repo to show how to do advanced routing. And that's all coming up right now, right here on Blaze and Train. All right, folks, you're in for a treat now because uh, for the very first time, in the Carl Franklin uh, universe, which includes .NET Rocks and AppV Next, uh, I'm introducing to you my friend Brian McKay, who was one of the very first people who responded to my request to uh, get some developers together for you know weekend projects and things like that, and that uh, became AppV Next, the company that now shepherds the Poly project, and which is in the .NET Foundation and also part of the .NET framework. But um, Brian uh, has been uh, a really great uh, resource uh, and a great friend as well, and just a very smart guy. And he was asking me about uh, this topic, and uh, I said, actually, uh, that is the topic that I was going to get to, so why don't you take it? So without further ado, Brian McKay. It's great to be here, Carl. All right, I'm going to walk you through how to integrate a – uh, integrate Blazor with an existing MVC application, uh, which I think is something people will come up against a lot. And mm. I'm happy to report that it's so easy that even your idiot house guests can probably handle it. Hey, did you hear that? <laughs> <laughs> um, so what I've got here is um, I'm, I'm starting with a out of the box MVC application. Um, you know, what you get when you go to file, new program, and just go through the default settings. So you can see here, it's got home and privacy. Uh, there's really nothing to it. So I'm going to take this and integrate Blazor with it. And this is .NET so, Core 3.1. This, this is, is .NET, .NET 5. All right. That's right. Yep, that's right. Not yet. Not yet. Okay, so let me switch over to a different instance of Visual Studio here that has all the changes. Okay. Okay. So um, there are only seven changes that had to be made. And I'm going to start out in startup.cs mm. down here. I scroll down under configure services. There are two changes to make. Um, first, we have to add Razor pages if you don't already have them. Um, Blazor typically runs with Razor pages, so uh, that needs to be there. Mm -hmm. And then add server side Blazor. So there are no extra packages needed at all. As of .NET 3.0, this is all just in there. Yeah. So you just you just include the service and you are running. Then. Down here under endpoints, you have to add two things. You have to add endpoints.map blazer hub and endpoints.map fallback page to uh, map fallback to page host. Yeah. Um, and that's, uh, that's vanilla stuff. If you were to create a new blazer app the same way through new project mm. blazer page, this would all be in there just like this. Yeah. Okay. So then we had to add under pages, host.cs HTML. This is very normal stuff. I did change yep. this to use my sites, um, my sites uh, instance of Bootstrap instead of um, instead of adding a new one like like you would have if you went through the the Blazor um, the Blazor project. But any um, Bootstrap theme CSS file is going to work fine. Right. That's right. Yeah, that's what I'm showing is that I, I used the one that was already here in this project. Yeah, so it works fine, just like that. Um, you need to copy over um, the main layout, which is um, sort of your overall layout for Blazor. You've got to copy yeah. over app.razor, which is the routing for uh, Blazor where everything Blazor resides. Yep. And then I, I also made index.razor, which is um, a simplified version of the counter that comes with the um, 
Blazor uh, demo project. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And also in site.css, I added a few lines of CSS because uh, when there are errors, there's a little golden error area at the bottom, and that's actually powered by CSS that has to be in your project. Right. So I just included this. That's the minimum you could possibly include for this to work. And Great. so if I run this, it will pop up, and you will have working Blazor. And if I go to slash home, you've got NPC. Wow. That seems like uh, seems too easy. Um, you said something about uh, hosts that you, you were you were dealing with routes and paths and stuff. Did you have to change anything in underscore host CSHTML from the standard Blazor template? I did not have to, no. Um, I did run into an issue. So let me show you this. Let's say we go back to the MVC here and we click on home. All right. An interesting thing happens here where um, Blazor has taken over the default route. Right. Okay. So you said map other, to default. Right. Privacy still works, mm -hmm. but home um, is right. Exactly. Blazor has taken it over. So if you want to know how I worked around that, I have a repository where I have a solution to it. Uh, it may not even be important to most people, but for me in my application, um, I actually had some pretty important things going on inside the default route and I didn't want to rewrite it in Blazor right away. So I wanted to preserve everything as completely as possible. So I did right. extra steps. So here's the URL to the repository right there. Right. Um, because typically when I think of integrating, I think that people want to keep their, their home page being an MVC page and then they want to add pages to that. So in order to do that, you have to set the base URL to something like Blazor, right? And then every page comes off of that. Is that what you found? Right. The approach that I took was I, I changed the base URL. So if I was to go to host here, I had to change this. I had to make a few changes in startup here. Um, this, there's, you can actually put a value in here to move the hub. It's funny. We uh, can't see your cursor. Oh, you can't see my cursor? No, that's strange. All right, we'll deal with it. It's okay. Okay. Um, I had to add a value here under Map Blazor Hub and yeah. some changes here. Uh, it's actually very minimal, um, but the way I did it, it moves all of your Blazor code under the slash Blazor URL fragment, right. which prevents any chance of any kind of routing collision from ever occurring, right. which I like. And the, the approach that we're taking is we intend to run Blazor under that Blazor directory. And then when we eventually port everything over to Blazor, we will can, we will revert back to a yeah. situation like this and get rid of MVC. And that's just so easy to do. I mean, it's all just the same stuff, which is, which is beautiful. It is the easiest migration to a next gen technology I've ever seen. That is crazy. Pull up uh, underscore host again, CSHTML. Oh, there's your cursor. But when you get into it, we, we miss it. All right, so just click on where the base is so that everybody can see it or highlight. Yeah, so that right there is saying that at the, at the base URL, in other words, the very beginning, that's where Blazor starts. But if you change that to something like Blazor and then you map the path to that is what you're saying, that all of your MVC stuff stays the same so long as you don't have like a controller called blazer or something like that um and then everything after blazer in the url becomes you know index counter whatever pages you have that's right yeah so this is this is setting the it's it's telling the browser where your relative path should start so if i change this to um slash blazer then right. all my relative paths automatically start there and yeah. that's a normal thing to manipulate in SPI, spa style applications you also have to make a change here uh, when you do that. Um, but if you want to see how that works, it's really simple. And the best way is just to look at the repo that we linked to before. Yep. And I'll put it up right again. There it is. Go for it. <laughs> Dude, is that it? That's it. That's all there is to it. Um, we've got a little bit of this working in production and I've had no problems. Um, it's fantastic. And you, you're fairly new to Blazor. Like I, I remember I showed Joel, Joel Hewlin, 
on this show, binding, and he had never seen any blazer before. He's too busy working, right? He doesn't have time, right? So you're the same way. I mean, you're basically on all these other projects. You're like, I think I might take a look at blazers. So what's your overall impression? Well, yeah, I am literally on a blazer train, appearing on a blazer train video while working through the blazer train videos. So uh, <laughs> my impression is that, um, so I've been at this for a while, just like you, not quite as long perhaps, but um, I feel like MVC is really powerful, but also um, a lot less productive in some ways than previous versions of um, pre previous generations of uh, dev technology that we've had. And this gets us back to really that level of productivity we had in web forms, yes. but with a lot less of the downsides. And that to me is, is magical. I mean, it's a revelation. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. All right. Well, I guess that's it, man. Uh, I'll see you at the next uh, AppV Next reunion, which should probably be in about 2030, by the way. These things are going now. <laughs> I hope it's a lot sooner than that. Yeah, me too. <laughs> All right. Thanks a lot, Brian. Thanks for having me. Now back to you in the studio, Carl. I told you it was easy. Now will you go write some code? Oh, and make sure you tune in next week where my guest is Dan Roth, and he's going to show us all the new and shiny Blazor stuff in .NET 5. Hey, thanks for riding the rails with me today. This is where I jump off. I'll see you next time. Blazor Train!